Elio guys and welcome back. So you just started MSO right? Got no clue what's going on but are interested in playing? Well I got the video for you. So quick overview of the basics here in the world of MSL. The goal of the game is split between being a collector, like myself, building mods for titans, which is a middle to end game content, or focusing on PvP, which again is middle to end game content. The level cap in this game is level 60 and all monsters can hit it with ascension stones correlating to their element. You need 16 of whatever monster you have in order to get it to its final evolution known as EVO 3. Because of the name of monsters, many of us refer to them by their EVO 1 name, even at EVO 3. Take the game's mascot Miho for example. A Evo 3 Miho is technically called Haran, but it's easier for the majority to call her Miho. Now 16 monsters regardless of element seems like a lot, but the game has ways built around that. Nat 5s are the strongest monsters available and thus are the hardest to get, at least in the beginning. But you don't need 16 of them in order to get it to its final stage. Most players only need 4 of the Astramon and use Gleams which are obtainable from PvP, completing dailies, Tower of Chaos, daily logins, and occasional events. Every Mon comes with 3 gem slots which are obtainable from running Story Stages, Golem Stages, Titans, Clan vs Clan, and also Colossus. For the sake of this video though, we will only focus on Story Stages and Golem Stages. But before we begin with that, do gem slots matter? Yes and no. If you are to read a monster's skill descriptions, you will find out. If that mon requires crit for its moves to work, then yes. The game binds certain gems to certain gem shapes only. Square slots exclusively are given critical rate gems. Triangle slots are exclusively given crit damage gems. And diamond slots are exclusively given resist gems. The rest of the gems such as HP, attack, defense, and recovery can all be in all of those slots. Ideally a mod that needs crit is a lot easier to build with a square slot to hit 100% crit rate rather than say a triangle triangle diamond mod. Is it still possible to hit max crit with that? Yes. But is it a lot harder to do it? Yes. In general you will see dark mods are desired with a square slot because of their innate higher critical damage versus all the other elements. While this is true not all dark mods need max crit. I repeat not all dark mods need max crit. So please do not obsess over gem slots, especially so early in the game. Now that we've gone over the basics, let's focus on what you as a new player should do. Your goal as a beginner is to hit mid game as soon as possible. In MSO, there are three categories you fit in, at least in my opinion. As a beginner, your goal is to go through the story until Pegos Coast Extreme and also clear the Golem Dungeon up until 8. Mid game players focus on farming golems B7, B8, and B9 in preparation for golems B10, which is the highest level at the time of this video. They also participate a lot more in PvP or Titans. A mid game player also begins working through dragons, which is a special dungeon on the weekends for some game changing gems. In game players have gotten their golem team solid, easily able to farm dragons and run colossus as well as world boss. In order to hit Pegos Coast Extreme, Simply play through the stages from normal to hard to extreme. Level up mods when you can and it's okay to get some to EVO 2, but don't focus on getting them to EVO 3 right now because you don't have enough gold for that. Worry about that later. Add all the friends you can and run through the story with whatever mods that you can get a hold of. Fire Miho isn't useless, but she isn't much of a help right now either. As you go through the stages, feel free to pick up mods like Fire Candling or Water Siren and any rares slash super rares that you run into. Level up your mods and push through the stages until you can clear at least half of Pagos Coast Extreme. This should take you a week or two depending on how much you play. If you pull a nat 5 before this, feel free to run with it. Once you hit Pagos Coast Extreme though, you are now able to farm out the mon that you will need for Golems B8. She's the blue girl with the seashell. Her name is Mona. You want to farm up preferably at least two of these girls. By two, I mean both to Evo 3. So yes, that means 32 of them in total. Their gem slots don't matter, but you can keep any triple square ones for now. With the gems you get from Extreme, you can also gem both of them up. I would put them on HP attack attack for right now. Aim for four star gems with percentages. Percentage gems are always better than flats. Once you can get both of them to Evo 3 and geared up, 
make sure that you're also farming the Starstone Dungeon and Elemental Dungeon for water. You want them at least level 50 before the real party starts. So assuming you have at least two Evo 3 Monas all gemmed up with a 4 star gem of Conviction at maybe plus 9 or plus 12, you are ready for the next step, Golems. Golems is the number one way to earn gold in this game. You can also earn it by farming story stages further in the map, but without good gems you don't have good mons. So the goal here is to push through golems all the way until golems be 8. Each golem has a different element, so ideally you want mons that are strong against it. If you got a nat 5, then just use it to hopefully push through. Borrow a friend's level 60, evo 3, whatever mon, and that can help as well. It's the exact same thing as you did with pushing through to Pegos Coast Extreme. Don't worry about Golems B7 or B9 right now. Golems B7 offers diamond shaped gems while Golems B9 offers triangle gems. Golems B8 offers square gems. The reason we came here is because not only is it the easiest place to farm in Golems, but it's also the fastest. Here you can spend all the money you have to get better gems for your Monas. Don't focus on other mons right now, just them. You want to upgrade their gems to 5 or 6 star gems if possible with the same set of HP attack attack. Don't worry about it if it's a set or not either. Once you can get them upgraded with their gems, you want to ascend them to level 60 and repeat this process. Now that you have at least two water monos at level 60, your runtime should be close to a minute or less. I can't stress this enough because as the money maker for a majority of players, having a low runtime here means more money quicker. You can now use the gold you got to begin raising and gearing other mons for golems B7 and B9. You can also use the gold you earn to max the capture areas for every area in the game. And by having a solid gold maker, you can invest in other mons to push you further through the story in golems as well. You can also break into dragons and maybe pick up a weak siphon set for easier farming. With this guide, you should hit mid game in no time and that's when MSR really gets fun. If you take anything from it, I hope it's the importance of Golems B8. If you don't have gold, good luck with that Dark Ender you pulled. A Mon is nothing without gold. Be sure to check out my Mon review playlist as well and join the Discord if you haven't already. The link is in the description below and we can definitely help you guys there too if you need any help. But anyways you guys, thank you so much for watching. If there's a question you want to ask, feel free to leave it in a comment below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.